Welcome to another edition of the Sabres Spotlight on the Marion Sports Network. And right now we're going to talk Marion men's basketball as bringing head coach Drake Diener. Coach, first of all, you know, it's been a few weeks since you've rolled the balls out. Uh, how's everything been going so far with, with the Sabres? It's been going good. It's been going good. It's a, it's a uh, transition, obviously, for me uh, as a first-time coach. Um, and it's a transition for the guys. You know, they're all, all players uh, that were recruited by, by Coach Boyle. So that's never always an easy tr uh, transition. But... They've done really well. Um, they've responded to everything we've asked them to do. I, they're actually, you know, a really fun group to coach because because they're trying really hard, um, and that's kind of the key. You know, we're going slowly kind of, you know, because a lot of things that I'm doing are different than what Coach Boyle did, so we're kind of going slowly, but they're picking things up slowly and and but the effort is always there and that's that's the fun part you mentioned uh taking over for coach Boyle who was here for about 30 years and obviously mm -hmm. he's done a lot of things his way how much has changed when it comes to just what, what you're looking for on the floor from from student athletes um I think it's changed quite a bit I think uh you know coach Boyle was more of a traditional motion offense style guy uh coming from the Dick Bennett school um and I'm I'm uh, I guess I would say I'm coming from more of a modern European style which which uh which um you know, I hesitate to call it European because I think it's kind of everywhere now where it's just a lot of spacing, a lot of guys on the floor that can shoot the ball um, and, and trying to play a little bit more up-tempo. I think that suits suits some of our, our talent. Um, you know, we got some, some quickness and some athleticism out there and not, and not necessarily a, a ton of just back-to-the-basket uh, post players like maybe they've had in the past. Um, but our bigs are doing a really good job of doing – playing this different style. I think for them it's a bigger adjustment because they've gone from, you know, kind of getting the ball in the post or, you know, setting a lot of screens and, and being just around the hoop to maybe having to play out a little bit. A big roster coming back when you when you started to practice. Mm -hmm. A lot of young men out there looking to play for Marion yeah. and are playing for Marion. Just, uh, yeah. just your impressions and how do you go about learning about each of the players and what have you learned, uh, you know, about about yeah. this roster? Well, it's been, a, it's been a slow and steady process. It started basically when I first got the job. I had phone conversations with some people and then or everybody, and then throughout the summer um, got to know a few of the guys because they were around Fond du Lac and around, around Marion. Um, and then as school started, just, just uh, you know, having meetings occasionally, seeing them around the weight room, seeing them uh, coming through the gym. So, uh, you know, it's been a slow a slow and steady process of getting to know people. Um, and we've done a – they've done a good job of, of – of buying into the fact that we have a huge roster um, and there only a certain number of guys can play. So it's a competitive atmosphere, but they're sticking together. And, and I think they're understanding that uh, we're trying to build something special. I know from teaching purposes as well, you've kind of split up practices a little bit, yeah. kind of gone in two groups. So you've kind of been doing double duty just to make sure that the, the kids kind of get to know exactly what you're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's important for every, everyone to get reps. Um, you know, if you, if you come out here with with our 26 or so guys, uh, I think it's that's a hard way to run a practice, and I think it's a hard for, hard for the guys to feel like they're always invested. And they, when we break it down into 12, 13, 14 man man practices, then everyone has to show up, everyone has to be ready to go at every drill, and there's no checking out of practice. So so I think that's been really effective, and I think it's got it's part of the reason that that uh, we're all bought in. We just have to. You know, as coaches continue, to, you know, we're we're doing the double practice, and uh, and I'm really appreciative of my of my staff uh, putting up with that for the first couple of weeks because you know these are guys with outside jobs; they're not full time employees here um, in the in the athletic department. So so I'm, I'm really thankful for, for to have uh, you know the friends and the in the in the uh, assistant coaches that I have. Can you kind of talk about who's been who's on your staff yeah. this year? Who you brought with you for your number one? Okay, so Coach Coach uh, Monroe is still here. Grant Monroe uh, has been here forever. You know, he works here in the in the university, and he uh, is our one of our assistant coaches. And then uh, Bob Hoffmaster has joined the staff. Uh, he's a longtime friend of mine. He used to coach with my father. He hasn't he hasn't uh, been involved directly in basketball in a long time. But I've he's I, a great basketball mind. I think so, yeah, and he's a great sounding board for me um, because I trust him and because I do think he's got a great feel for, for the game and a great feel for, for talent and, and, and players and, and people in general. And I think the players, as they get to know him, he'll be a great sounding board for them as well. Um, uh, Chris Saberlick, he helped out with Coach Boyle as much as he could, and he's going to do the same for me, and he's been you know invaluable because him and he and uh, and Coach Monroe have the background with some of the kids, and you know they already had the relationship, and they can um, – you know, kind of give me some guidance in that way. Um, and then uh, Derek Seminus is going to be around as much as he can be. Uh, he played for my brother at Cardinal Stritch. He's from Rosendale, played at Laconia. Um, really, really great player, and, and he's been coaching 
uh, assistant coaching out at Laconia for the past couple of years, and he's going to be around as much as he can. So he, we've got we've got some guys we're going to piecemeal it together uh, here this year. And Derek's had some professional basketball uh, cup of coffee as well. Yes, yeah, he went overseas, uh, played in Denmark for a year, and was pretty pretty successful for a year, and then. Uh, Decided to shut it down, and now he's working working around here. Now, one of the things that I think a lot of the student athletes, a lot of your guys, were talking about before you actually started practice was, yeah. was your conditioning. I know a lot of guys that was the talk yeah. of some yeah. of the guys, and you really took it to some of them early, and then they they bought in and to get them into basketball shape. Yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, you know, I hope I wasn't trying to scare them. I was no. just trying to trying to uh, trying to let them know what what the responsibility and the in, in the level of accountability we were going to have in terms of our conditioning. Um, and, you know, if it scared them, maybe that's a good thing because I think they showed up in pretty good shape. We had some tough workouts early on, but they responded pretty well. Um, I was uh, – I think I, I think I was was pleasantly surprised by the type of shape they were in. I was contemplating, are they in pretty good shape or am I just being too soft? I don't know. There was like a – I was trying to, trying to figure that out. But I think, you know, judging by we had a scrimmage the other day and I thought we held up pretty well physically. And and, uh, and so so I'm pretty happy with, with the shape they came in and – now, with with the roster coming back, you lost Alex Manhart, who was a first team All Conference yeah. big man, but you bring a lot back from last year's squad that you know just finished outside of the NAC playoff race. Mm-hmm. But you know, midway through the year, they were right there near the top, and they competed with yeah. a lot of the talent and a lot of the best teams in yeah. this conference. So you have some cookies in the cookie jar, don't you? And what have you yeah. what have you seen from them? Yeah, I, I uh, you know I understood that basically even before I got the job. I started watching some film of the of the, of the games last year. Um, and I saw that we, there is some talent, you know, it's, uh, it was, you know, like last year's sophomore class, they were freshmen last year. So there's some young talent there. And then, you know, having your starting point guard back, um, in Tyrese and then Kelvin is another senior. That's nice to have. And then we have, you know, we, we, we really have a, a, a really deep team right now. There's a lot, I've talked to the other, our, our other coaches on the staff and, we talk like, geez, every, these guys are making it hard on us to pick who the heck's going to get the minutes because they because they've worked hard and they all show flashes of being able to do different things. So, um, you know, I'm I'm happy with. I think we can be competitive with the talent we have. Like you said, we don't have uh, Manhart was our only all conference guy. He's gone. So there also is the side of uh, that we should definitely be motivated. There's no reason for anybody to think we're any good, including ourselves, because. There's no one out there that's an all-conference player. We didn't make the conference tournament last year, so we have to fight to get, try to get there, you know, and, and I think that's hopefully motivating us and, and motivating our guys. And do you think it has a potential with, you know, you mentioned Tyrese Pence and Calvin Jones, you throw Mc, uh, Tavares McCullough in there and then some others. I mean, you're going to really be able to get after it teams defensively out, out, out on the wing, aren't yeah. you, and, out, and, and, and the other team's guards make it really difficult for them. That's that's the idea. I think uh, when you look at our roster with those, with those three guys that you mentioned and, um, you know, some of the other athletic, players that we have I think that has to be our identity um you know uh, our offensive like last year the kind of the offense ran through Manhart in the post um so I I want our identity be an identity to start on the defensive end and that's got to be making people uncomfortable that's why I always preach is just to try to make make the guy you're guarding uncomfortable not necessarily with too much gambling or slapping because we don't want to foul but just to make them uncomfortable and, and uh and we're buying into that. Our, our guards, I think, enjoy that. Those three guys that you mentioned really do enjoy pressuring people because they have that ability. So that's that's always nice. And you do bring back some guys that did log some some minutes in the paint in Polchinski and Vanessa. Yeah. Uh, two, they're different kinds of big bigs than what Manhart is, but both yeah. guys that can play. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Tristan's been injured. He's got an ankle issue. But, uh, um, you know, Will has done a great job. You know, it's a totally different style for him from last year, and he's bought in really well. Um you know, Danny is Danny Duhai has done done well in the preseason here. Another guy who has never played the five that I really like as a five is Miles Cochran. He's done a great job just because he he's a great, really coachable. He does exactly what I tell him. He's always going a hundred percent, sprinting, hedging on screens, uh, setting screens, doing everything we ask him to do, and fighting around on the post. He's done a great job with that. And then we have a freshman big man, uh, Scott Pauls, who's been a pleasant surprise, who who, who really works hard. So. Um, you know, we, I think at each position we've got some uh, a competitive situation. Is it going to be one of those cases where you're going to be tinkering with the rotation probably through Christmas and maybe even into the first of the year to kind of figure out uh, what is the best mix for Marion? Yeah, I think um, what I'd like to, what, I'm, what I will continue to tell the guys going forward is that not to get discouraged. You know, you put one game happens and you didn't get in the game. Well, that that's we got to. Like I said, it's a competitive situation at every position. So. 
Um, you know, my idea is that it's, I think it's difficult to go more than 10, 11 deep in a game because I think guys tend to lose some flow that way. But as a season goes, you know, lineups can definitely change. And uh, I envision them changing probably a lot because of the because of the competitive nature of, of our different positions. What's your take on the knack so far? I know you've probably – Focus mostly on Marion University, your yeah. team taking over, but uh, the NAC in general, have you done any? Yeah. Have you looked at that at all this year? Not really. Um, you know, I did my homework uh, even before I got the job, just kind of reviewing the league. So I had an idea of like the league asked for a preseason prediction. So I had a little something to look at in terms of the, the, their record last year and who they had returning. So I kind of know who's supposed to be good. Um, but the extent of my research is just watch, having watched some Marion games last year. But even then, I was watching mostly mostly the Marion side and trying to get to know that those players. Um, so I, you know, I, I, especially for me as a, as a new coach, like I got too many other things to figure out than to try to figure out what another coach is doing. So, uh, I'm going to worry about us. And then, you know, when the, when the conference games start to come around, we'll obviously prepare for each opponent, but, but I've got a, I've got a lot to learn here before I start learning about other people. Well, Saturday the seventeenth, you'll open up against UW Superior. Hope to get a yeah. big, big house here. It's a four o'clock start, I believe, in the afternoon. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you know, Sadoff can get pretty loud when uh, yeah. when, when they get the place full. The students come out in full force. Yeah, yeah. We, I'm hoping to have that. I'm hoping to have some, you know, some hopefully some curious people from the community that uh, that I've known over the years come in and, uh, like you said, it doesn't take much to pack this place, and that's that's one of the things that I sell to our recruits I you know I say you know if I had a big beautiful gym to sell you I would sell it but but uh, what I can sell is that we put a couple a few hundred people in here and it's it's going to feel like Cameron Indoor. Well, I can tell you the atmosphere when when, when Mary made to the NCAA tournament as, as the, the top seed in the championship round yeah. you see I don't know if you've seen video or not of of, of the gym yeah. in that championship game yeah. it was as great as any atmosphere you're going to see. Really? Yeah really? I'll have to find that video and show yeah, it to the, coach. The, Against not not within the fire code, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think that we probably Brandon, were you here for that? No, I was gonna say I probably broke the fire code here. Yeah. I'd say, but <laughs> you'd like to have that again at Marion, wouldn't we? Well, we would, we would. We'd love to have it every week. But uh, you know, I'm hoping, like I said, to get some people in the community. We got to get ourselves out there a little bit, um, and then when they show up, our guys got to be ready to go and put put a good product out there. Drake Diener, men's basketball coach, again Saturday. November 17th, UW Superior, 4 o'clock. That's going to be a fun time, and thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it, Wade. All right, Drake Diener, you've been watching a Sabre Spotlight on the Marion Sports Network.